Hey everyone, this is Ben from Joe Bean Roasters. Uh, today we're gonna to be tasting the Las Torres Natural. This is a Costa Rican coffee. It's coming from the Cafe Ravense del Chiripo farm, which is run by the Arrhenius family. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. So huge uh, fig, date, very, very chocolatey smelling coffee. Um, yeah, just big, darker fruit. Again, that fig, that date, that chocolate. Very aromatic coffee. So this is a naturally processed version of the Las Torres slot. Um, most of the coffees uh, that Café Revense does are honey processed, but they do uh, a few natural processes as well. Um, Las Torres is one of their big flagship plots and one of our favorite coffees. We've been bringing that in for a number of years now. Um, but we discovered the natural version uh, when we went down and did a farm visit a couple years back and really fell in love with this lot as well. Um, a lot of that same sweetness that we see with the, the Las Torres lot, um, but really amping up the, the sugars, amping up the fruits and bringing in a little bit more of that kind of fig characteristic, whereas the Las Torres lot tends to be very pineapple-y as far as its acidity goes. So honey processed coffee is when, after the uh, coffee cherry is picked, the outer skin of the fruit is removed, but then that sticky mucilage is allowed to dry under the coffee, unlike in a washed coffee where the, the mucilage would be fermented and washed away, washed clean. With a natural processed coffee, after the cherry is picked, the, uh, the whole fruit is allowed to dry until it's this kind of stiff husk and then it's mechanically removed. So with natural processed coffees, you tend to just get bigger, fruitier, kind of uh, more wild, interesting types of uh, tastes and aromas in the coffee. And Cafe Revents, another uh, thing worth noting about them, they do a lot of experimentation, especially when it comes to processing. So they've really researched keeping coffee in anaerobic conditions before they transfer it to raised beds. Uh, playing around with carbonic maceration and allowing fermentation to occur on the tree itself before they start picking. And then they're very particular about the drying process as well, keeping everything in covered hoop houses, all in raised beds, all very meticulously turned. I'm really looking for that nice, gentle, even drying of the coffee, which leads to a super clean, natural coffee. So they're right next to a national forest. So there's a lot of wildlife there, um, a ton of different bird species that migrate through their land. Uh, Costa Rica as a country in general is just really good at preserving its wildlife and kind of the, uh, the natural environments that exists there. And for this family, uh, that's certainly a priority for them as well, making sure that they're using environmentally sustainable practices. They're keeping lots of natural shade trees and not disrupting the natural migrations of animals through the farm area there. All right, here we go. So again, huge, huge fruit, that ripe fig, dates, a strong vanilla characteristic in here. Um, I get a lot of uh, like a, a sweet black cherry smell as well. And again, that sweet chocolate being a very, very dominant smell in this coffee as well. Most flavor comes from aroma, right? So taste only contributes um, a relatively small amount of what we experience when we consume something. Um, so smelling gives us a ton of information about the quality of the coffee and just what makes it interesting and complex. Um, both when we're smelling the dry grounds of the coffee, when we add water and we're smelling the, the wet crusts of the coffee as it, it brews and we break and we release all those kind of uh, aromatics from that process. But then when we drink the coffee as well, we're breaking open uh, the, the oils inside the coffee contain a lot of aromatic information. And as we drink the coffee, those little packets of information break open on our tongue, brings information up to the olfactory system and just keeps giving you more and more aromatic information about the coffee. Um, so if you ever wanna see, you can hold your nose while you drink coffee and notice um, how little you taste comparatively. 
Um, so coffee, aromas, everything for coffee. Beginning of 2020, uh, we got to go and stay down at the farm for a little more than a week and uh, toured the whole area, spent time with the family, cut through a ton of different coffees. And uh, yeah, beautiful area, uh, really warm, uh, wonderful family to work with. All right, let's give it a taste. Huge chocolate, very kind of soft uh, chocolate vanilla. Even though the fruit is very prominent, the acidity feels nice and soft with this coffee as well. So that it's that big, sweet, kind of fig date fruit, bit of that black cherry, but the, the acidity is pretty mild and it's really, it's a very sugar forward coffee with that sweet chocolate, that vanilla. I'd say more of a, a round, kind of smooth, creamy body to this coffee. Um, yeah, again, the, the sweetness is what really lingers uh, with this coffee here. Cherry starting to emerge more. I think this is a coffee too, where the acidity uh, perks up a little bit as it cools down. Um, but again, just sugary, sweet, chocolate, vanilla, cherry, fig, uh, super aromatic, very sweet, very round, really wonderful coffee. Uh, and again, this is the uh, the Las Torres Natural lot in Costa Rica. This is coming to us from the uh, Arrhenius family with their farm, Cafe Ravense del Chiripo. And uh, yeah, we love working with these guys. If you're interested, check it out on our website, joebeanroasters.com and uh, enjoy. <laughs>